Hey guys and welcome back to Let's Shoot Accountancy. In our previous session, we have studied about the format of manufacturing account and its entire process with the help of an example. We also found out the cost of production for manufacturing of sofa sets in the books of Mr. David. If you haven't seen the video, then you can click on the link given below in the description box as it is the base for this topic. In today's session, we will analyze and understand the formats of trading account profit and loss account and balance sheet and most importantly we will understand the difference between manufacturing account and trading account so watch this video till the end if you enjoy our videos don't forget to like share and subscribe to our channel and yes hit the bell icon to get the latest updates also get the privilege to become a prime member and get the access to all our amazing perks on your fingertips by just clicking the join button so let's begin with today's session. Generally, a trading account enables a company to determine its profitability with the data provided by it. The company's accounting and management team can decide where it can make changes to cut the expenses and increase profits. Similarly, in trading account of a manufacturing company, the production cost, as calculated by drawing up the manufacturing account, should be used in the place of purchase figures. Trading account of a manufacturing company mainly shows the quantities of finished goods manufactured and sold and also the opening and closing balances of the stocks. Let's begin with drawing the format now. The first item on the debit side of trading account is opening stock of finished goods. Next is the cost of goods produced. As per the manufacturing account, the cost of production of the company is recorded usually on the credit side as trading account and this amount is further transferred to the trading account on debit side as manufacturing account. Then moving on to the credit side, we have net sales of finished goods that is sales less sales return can be displayed in the trading account if they are given in trial balance. So under other goods account, we have goods lost by fire, goods withdrawn by proprietor, goods distributed as free sample. These accounts record the cost of finished goods lost, withdrawn or distributed. Since goods out of these accounts show credit balances and then get transferred to the credit side of trading account. The last item on credit side is closing stock of finished goods. Till here recording of all the items on a trading account that could probably appear in the trial balance is done. The final result or you can say the gross profit or loss can be found out by balancing the debit and credit figures. After taking the totals of debit and credit side, we can conclude it as if credit side is bigger, it indicates that the value of sale is more than the cost of goods produced and sold which is known as gross profit earned by the businessman. Now this gross profit is written on the debit side and carried down to the profit and loss account. If the debit side is bigger, it indicates that the cost of manufacture is more than the value of sales and this is known as gross loss. We write the amount on the credit side of trading account and carry down to the debit side of profit and loss. I hope you have understood the format of trading account. Usually, some students get confused between manufacturing account and trading account. So today, let's clear this doubt. So basically, there are four major differences. To begin with, the first difference is the item included in both of them. Manufacturing account includes all the expenses incurred on manufacturing a product for the company. Whereas, trading account includes the cost of goods manufactured, sales number, other goods account as well as opening and closing stocks. The second and the most important difference is the result or reason for making these accounts. Manufacturing account gives the cost of product manufactured, but trading account gives the verdict whether it is a profit or loss for the company in the financial year. Third difference is the inventories of these accounts. Manufacturing account discloses the opening and closing stocks of raw material and work in progress. Whereas, trading account discloses only the opening and closing stocks of finished goods. And last but not the least is the hierarchy of statements. Manufacturing account details are required to create trading account. 
and details of trading account helps to create the final balance sheet of the company. Isn't this fun? With this piece of information, you will never get confused between trading account and manufacturing account. We have formats of profit and loss account and balance sheet yet to be done. So moving ahead with the profit and loss account, the format for the profit and loss account is more or less the same as we have studied earlier. The gross profit brought down from the trading account is the first item on the credit side of the profit and loss account. If there is gross loss, it is the first item shown on the debit side of profit and loss account. Next, we have other income. Other income includes amounts received by the way of interest on loans given, dividend received on amounts invested in shares, rent received from premises given on rent, discount received, commission received, profit on sale of fixed assets, and so on. Whereas, gains include amounts received by the business by the way of recovery of bad debts, subsidies, or grants received. Here, we are done with all the possible items that could appear on the credit side of profit and loss account. Coming on to the debit side of profit and loss account, we have office and administrative expenses. These expenses are incurred to plan, organize, administer and control the business. Examples are salaries to office staff, rent, rates, insurance, lighting to office, printing, telephones, postage, legal charges, audit charges, general expenses, etc. Next, we have that is selling and distribution expenses. Selling expenses are the expenses incurred to create and increase the demand for goods. Distribution expenses are the expenses incurred from the time the goods are sold, leave the trader's premises till the goods reach to the customer. Examples are packing materials, salaries of sales and distribution staff, traveling, conveyance, commission or discount on sales, advertisement or showroom expenses, warehouse expenses, freight outward, carriage outwards, expenses on exports, royalties on sales. Moving on to the next one that is finance and interest expenses. Finance expenses are the expenses incurred to obtain loans, bank charges, discount to debtors, etc. The other item shown under this head is interest paid on loans. Then we have depreciation charged on plant and machinery, building, motor vehicles, delivery vans, office equipments, etc. And lastly, we have unusual expenses or losses. Losses includes amounts lost by the business by way of goods lost by fire, goods distributed as free samples, bad debts, loss on sale of fixed assets, etc. These are debited to the profit and loss account. So these were all the items on the debit side of profit and loss account. The net profit or net loss is found out by balancing the profit and loss account. If the credit side is bigger, it indicates that the total income is more than the total expenses. This is known as net profit earned by the business. In the next step, the amounts of income tax or transfer to reserves, etc., known as appropriations out of profits, are debited to the profit and loss account. Appropriations can be made only after ascertaining the amount of net profits as the amount of income tax depends upon the amount of net profit. Then we write the amount of net profit on the debit side and transfer it to the credit side of capital account. If the debit side is bigger, it indicates that the expenses are more than income. This is known as net loss. In case of net loss, there can be no appropriations. We write the amount of net loss on the credit side of profit and loss account and transfer it to the debit of capital account. Appropriation means the amount transferred out of net profits for paying the income tax or creating reserves. For example, reserves for contingencies. These appear on the debit side of profit and loss account. Wasn't this really easy? We have covered almost all the items that would come under profit and loss account. Now let's move on to the last format that is format of balance sheet. This too is exactly the same as we have studied earlier. 
At this stage, only the accounts pertaining to the assets and the personal accounts of debtors, creditors and liabilities remain in the trial balance. All these remaining accounts are shown in a statement known as balance sheet. Balance sheet is not an account, it is a statement as the balances are not transferred from the trial balance but only listed in the balance sheet. This is the reason the title is written as balance sheet as at. The balance sheet is vertically divided into two sides. The left hand side shows the liabilities and the right hand side shows assets. Let's have a look at the liabilities side. Capital means the amount due to the owner of the business. Capital is shown as the first heading under liabilities side. It is presented as follows. Capital account brought down that is opening balance to which we add net profit for the year and capital brought in and we will deduct net loss for the year and drawings which is equal to net capital. Then we have reserves. Reserves means part of profit reserved for the future use. It is an amount set aside out of profits to meet any unknown or sudden liability. Out of the net profit, some amount is transferred first to the reserves and only the balance is transferred to capital account. The second last heading is loans. This includes bank loans, bank overdrafts and the amounts borrowed from others on which interest is paid. I hope you are understanding the formats. And the last is current liabilities. These are short term liabilities. These include creditors for goods, bills payable, outstanding expenses, various provision for income received in advance, etc. These were the items that could come under liabilities side. Let us have a look at the asset side of balance sheet. Just as the liabilities side, here too all the items are same as studied earlier. Fixed asset is the first head of asset side and it includes items like machinery, building, trucks, etc which benefit the business for a long time. Fixed assets may be tangible or intangible. Tangible assets are assets that can be touched. For example, land, machinery, building, vehicles, furnitures, etc. Intangible assets are invisible items like goodwill, trademark, etc. which do not physically exist but do benefit the business over a long period of time. Now goodwill means the reputation. Patent means a legal right of an investor of a new product and trademark is a registered name or symbol used only by the owner. As we all know that on these fixed assets, we deduct depreciation charged on them. So let's show it in the format. Moving on to the last part of balance sheet, we have investments. This includes items like shares, debentures, saving certificates, etc which earn interest or dividends. Then we have current assets. It includes items like cash, stock, debtors, etc. which remain in the business but for a short time. Current assets are constantly changed into cash. Thus goods are sold and cash is received. It also includes prepaid expenses, incomes receivables, bills receivables, loans and advances given, etc. These were the items that come under asset side. A balance sheet need not be balanced. The total assets must always be equal to the total liabilities. So we shall end today's session here itself, where we saw the formats of trading account, profit and loss account and balance sheet. We also understood the four major differences between manufacturing account and trading account. In the next session, we will cover all the important and star marked adjustments with the effects. We hope you liked this session and it helps strengthen your basics so that you don't make any mistakes related to them. If you have any doubts, feel free to ask us in the comment section. We are always there to help you. For more such videos, do subscribe to our channel Let's Tute Accountancy and hit the bell icon to get the latest updates. We also provide online courses on our website www.letstu.com at very affordable prices. Thank you and see you soon in our next session. Until then, keep watching, keep learning.